Hey everyone, this is part one of what I'm thinking will be a, a two-part video. And uh, this first part is going to talk about um, some of products. Uh, truth tables, K-maps, uh, Boolean algebra, and circuits. Um, in the second part, I think I'm going to cover um, NAND gate and NOR gate implementation. Um, as well as, oh yeah, product of sums, I guess. So without further ado, I guess we should get started. Uh, so the video is going to follow kind of this type of question here. So given the truth table, draw the circuit. Um, this is a very common question. Uh, you might be given a Boolean function instead, um, but the same types of principles can apply. So I'm going to cut out for a second while I draw kind of a blank K-map, which is how we're going to get started. All right, please forgive the lack of symmetry. I honestly, I just don't care enough. I've taken this video, like I've shot it maybe 10 times so far. So I'm just doing the bare basics here. So I'm gonna draw our little divider. I'm gonna split up our three variables. So we have x to the left of this variable and then, or uh, of the divider, and then we have y and z to the right of the divider. So here we're going to list our possible x's. So x can only be 0 or 1 here, because it's only one variable, so it can really only be just 0 or 1. Um, so on the top we have y and z, so we have a few more possibilities for, for those two variables. So we have 0 and 0, so y and z can be 0 and 0, can be 0 and 1. Then here we're actually going to do 1, 1, and then 1, 0. So I'm not entirely sure why this happens. Uh, when I was learning how to do this, they explained that was kind of like to just go up by one bit at a time. Um, so, I mean, I still don't really get that, but I mean, if if you're anything like me, then just memorize it and you'll be better off. Um, so now we're going to take a look at our truth table. And again, these uh, these F values here are completely arbitrary. They have They hold no real significance. I just tossed them in there. So when X, Y, and Z are 0, F will also be 0. So we'll put a 0 in there. And really, we can just look for the 1s. Um, so we have a 1 here, we have a 1 here, and we have a 1 here. So at 1, 0, and 0, we have a 1. So we look at where x is 1, and then 0, 0. So we have a 1 here. I forgot this one up here. So when x is 0, and y is 0, and z is 1, we have f equals 1. So then we go into the x equals 0 row and then y and z are 0, 1, so we'll have a 1 here. And finally, we'll have a 1 here because of 1, 0, 1. It's in the 1, 0, 1 square right here. Okay, so now we're going to do grouping. So the idea here is that you want to group as many numbers as possible. Whoops, I forgot my zeros here. You want to group as many numbers as possible here. So if you're doing um, sum of products like we are, you're going to be grouping up ones. So you'll find your ones in here and you'll group them up. So you want to group as many ones together as possible for sum of products. The catch is that you can only group two numbers, four numbers, eight numbers, and so on. Powers of two. So you want to group as many numbers as, as possible into um, your groups. And different the the numbers here can be in more than one group, as we'll see by this example here. Um, but you want to do that as little as possible because if you have too many numbers that are shared between different groups, you'll have a more complex um, function in the end than you'll need. So here we can make groups of two because we don't quite have four numbers that are all stuck together, and we don't have eight numbers that are all stuck together. Um, but if you stay tuned for the product of sums video, which is going to be part two, then you'll see that we'll have a group of four um, for this example. So specifically here, our red group is going to be these bottom two numbers because they're sitting next to each other and it's a power of two. It's two numbers, so we can group them together. Group pink is also a group of two. And it's these two here. So see how we use this one twice? We're totally allowed to do that. All right, so now we're going to write out what numbers are in these, these, uh, these squares here. So first of all, for our red group, 
red. We're going to have x is 1, and then y and z are 0. So that's 1, 0, 0. And the only other square in the red group is 1, 0, 1. So now we can focus on pink. And we have 0, 0, 1. That's our first square here. And then we have 1, 0, 1, which is our second square here. And now all we're doing is checking out which numbers stay the same in the columns. So these ones aren't the same, so we can take that out. I'll label these as well. So in our kind of first part of our Boolean function, we will not have a Z. In the second part, however, it looks like we will. So let's circle these. I'll use brown. So these two numbers are the same, which means we'll have an X. And these two numbers are the same, which means we'll have a not y because they're 0. So then we'll have x, not y, plus, because we're doing sum of products, so this is your product here, we're summing them together. And there's brown, so we have a not y again, and we have a z. And we won't have an x for the second part. So we'll have x not y plus not y z. So that's our Boolean function here. And I actually forgot to mention how you know that there's going to be eight squares in your k map. So again, you're looking at powers of two. If you have three variables, then you can ask yourself, OK, well, what's two to the power of three, where three is the number of variables you have? That will be eight. And that's how many squares you have. Another way you can do it is to just count how many lines you have in your truth table, if you have a truth table. So if you don't have a truth table, count your variables. If you do, then you can just count the lines. So we have eight lines here, so we'll have eight squares. Comparatively, if you have four variables, you'll have 16 squares. If you had a truth table for your four variables, you'll have 16 lines. So I'll take that out just to not confuse people further. I think we can take this out too. I'll shift this a bit lower down here. Okay, so now we can draw our circuit finally. So we have variables x, y, z. So our very first set of terms here is x not y. So we have our AND gate because we know that a product represents AND. And since we have not y, we actually have to put in an inverter so that our y input is inverted. And then we have our second set of terms here, our second product, which is not y again. So we'll do our little dot. You know what? I'm going to redo that. Uh, I should have put the inverter a little bit lower. Okay, there we go. So for our second uh, set of terms here, we have not y and z. So we want to stick our little dot here above the inverter because we're using not y again. And then finally, the plus means or. So I'm super terrible at making or gates. But that merges the two together, and finally we have an f. So that's the first part of the video. This is honestly just the bare basics. Um, the second video will be diving a bit more into depth. We're going to talk about um, the product of sums and uh, NAND gate and OR gate implementation and maybe a couple other things. I don't know yet. So thanks for watching. And um, be sure to ask uh, questions, suggest new videos and stuff in the comments. And happy studying.